factors in plastic circularity and uh, decarbonization. Inventor of over 12 uh, patents, Suhas is uh, passionate about developing technologies for producing high quality liquids from plastic and the biomass waste. He's equally passionate about building cross value chain synergies for unlocking advanced recycling of plastic waste. His presentation today will talk about deep bottle bottlenecking uh, pyrolysis based circularity of post consumer and landfill plastic waste. Welcome, Suhas. Hello, everyone. I'm Suhas Dixit, CEO of Epikemi. I would like to thank Smithers team for the initiative of creating this highly engaging uh, chemical recycling summit. Initiatives help all of us uh, figure out plastic circularity one step at a time. Uh, plastic circularity is important to all of us and this presentation is about our efforts to de-bottleneck uh, pyrolysis based circularity for post-consumer mixed plastic waste. This uh, presentation is uh, divided in five parts. First, who we are. Uh, second part deals with uh, what are the legislations that promote chemical recycling. Third part is about the urgency of chemical recycling. Fourth part about the bottlenecks of chemical recycling. And fifth part is about what we are doing as a company to work on these bottlenecks uh, of uh, chemical recycling. So we are leaders in uh, pyrolysis. We have supplied 47 plastic pyrolysis plants since 2007. Uh, we have ongoing global assignments of up to 240 tons per day of uh, pyrolysis projects. Our global clients include petrochemical companies, FMCG packaging companies, engineering companies and pyrolysis companies from UK, Europe, North America, Middle East, Africa and Asia. We are building our own 50 ton per day plastic to oil plant near Mumbai. We have 12 patented technologies that accelerate chemical recycling of mixed and post consumer plastic waste. Our vision is to collaborate and scale up uh, production of circular plastics and sustainable chemicals by 300 kilotons per annum by 2030 using our patented pyrolysis as well as oil purification technologies uh, we want to sincerely own and operate uh, at strategic locations plastic to purified pyrolysis oil projects as well as we want to globally work collaborate with local partners uh, license technologies to accelerate plastic circularity. As a company, we have 310 man years of combined pyrolysis experience. Our technology has converted 179 million kilograms of plastic waste to oil over 1.3 million hours of operation. Epikemi has an end-to-end -end expertise in producing high-quality liquids from post-consumer plastic waste, starting from plastic segregation, shredding, washing, drying, pyrolysis, as well as oil purification. We continue to develop technologies, engineer projects, manufacture machinery, install, commission, and operate plants. We like to collaborate and develop a proof of concept uh, to start with and then uh, following proven process for developing chemical process plants for pyrolysis and oil purification. Our technology clients benefit from constant advancements of the technologies enabled by our robust R&D. Recently, uh, we announced a cooperation agreement with Technip Energies, uh, Technip Energies to commercialize our advanced plastic to high quality pyrolysis oil technologies. Now, 
this takes us to the second part of the uh, presentation about the legislations uh, the core legislations uh, that accelerate plastic circularity is extended producer responsibility and compared to uh, 20 2000 and to 2018 if we uh, if we analyze the global presence of extended producer responsibility from year 2000 to 2018 extended producer responsibility is seen as a legislation across the world now the only challenge is that uh, extended producer responsibility is kind of present in the regions where plastic mismanagement is not a problem plastic mismanagement is a problem in Africa and Asia here the extended producer responsibility legislations are in drafting stage if we see the current status uh, uh, it is yet to be very sincerely in implemented uh, across Africa or India or uh, Southeast Asia and all additionally legislations like plastic tax accelerate plastic circularity Canada has classified plastic waste as toxic and uh, Europe uh, has plastic circularity targets of current 25 percent to 55 percent by 2030 uh, so these are the legislations that directly or indirectly accelerate plastic circularity uh, but yes I mean is it really urgent to uh, accelerate uh, uh, chemical recycling of plastics how, how urgent it is uh, to get into chemical recycling so just to uh, look at the data from a different di dimension 91% uh, of plastic waste is not recycled uh, even mechanical recycling produces uh, mechanically non recyclable plastic waste and all this plastic waste goes for burning or landfills burning in waste to energy plants and uh, ultimately what goes to landfill also has to go for chemical recycling eventually so chemical recycling of plastic waste is an inevitable uh, 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 situation additional reason reason for urgency is let's look at this data from McKinsey and company uh, compared to 2018 and the numbers from 2018 have not changed much uh, uh, we are in 2022 so uh, numbers have not changed much lot of uh, recycling projects went on hold during COVID so numbers in 2018 and 2022 are very similar so what was happening back then in 2018 or now in 2022 is that almost 100% of recycling is mechanical recycling and uh, uh, as per McKinsey and company by 2030 if uh, 50% uh, of recycling rates are to be achieved then 220 million metric tons of plastic wa waste has to be recycled out of which 50% can be mechanically recycled and 50% can be recy recycled chemically so by 2030 probably 110 million metric tons of plastic waste needs to be recycled chemically now uh, if you see then mechanical recycling is to be scaled up from 40 million metric tons to 110 million metric tons so scaling up mechanical re mechanical recycling is important at the same time uh, chemical recycling has to be scaled up from almost 0 million metric tons to 110 million metric tons per uh, annum by 2030 so so the urgency of scaling up chemical recycling is much higher than scaling up mechanical recycling uh, this is another dimension into uh, the data that exists that since the beginning of plastic waste generation less than 1% uh, of uh, 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste has been recycled more than once so if re recycling once is plastic circularity then we can say that we have plastic circularity rate of 1% uh, 
and if we say that recycling again and again is plastic circularity then we have plastic circularity rate of probably zero percent right now another data uh, based on public domain uh, uh, shell exxon mobil uh, basf sabic and cpkm are few of the leading petrochemical giants who have uh, publicly announced their chemical recycling ambitions by 2030 five of them together uh, based on that data would chemically recycle 10 million metric tons of plastic waste per annum a uh, plastic waste generation will increase from uh, 330 million metric tons uh, now to somewhere around 440 million metric tons per year since mechanical recycling cannot solve problem completely plastic waste landfilling will increase from around 160 million metric tons per year in 2022 to 180 million metric tons per year in 2030 uh, which means uh, uh, from now to 2030 uh, humans will send additional 1.5 billion metric tons of plastic waste to landfills hence uh, there is a huge gap uh, between uh, amount of plastic waste going to landfills uh, uh, and chemical recycling ambitions as well as the need of the R. Uh, it is essential that all stakeholders collaborate and accelerate chemical recycling of plastic waste. Uh, hence, there is a huge gap of around 120 uh, from from now till even 2030. There would be a gap of around 120 million tons per uh, annum between chemical recycling targets and uh, known as of now and uh, landfill uh, landfilling quantities. So 120 million metric tons is actually approximately 20% of global NAFTA production and this 120 million metric tons per annum is a market opportunity to make petrochemical operations uh, sustainable. As part of our global expansion strategy, we are curious to build synergies with uh, local partners and domain leaders, uh, value chain partners in each country and city to try and fill this gap by building up the teamwork. Uh, this is a different view why we need chemical recycling. We've discussed the uh, extended producer responsibility already. Uh, we need to increase the recyclability. Food and pharma recycling, uh, recycled content in food and pharma cannot be enabled by mechanical recycling. So. Uh, that's why chemical recycling has to uh, step in and uh, also compliance to s sustainability targets requires uh, scaling up chemical recycling. And now scaling up chemical recycling doesn't only mean that uh, somebody is willing to buy the oil. Uh, it also means that uh, investments are required to develop uh, such projects. For example, based on another uh, 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 bottleneck that exists is that uh, availability of the investments so amount of investments uh, uh, that would be required to reach even like 10% uh, of circular plastics production uh, by 2040 uh, would require around 90 billion dollars of investments uh, Also, another uh, uh, thing to look at is that would these investments be happening uh, across the globe or these in like $90 billion may not be a huge amount for regions like developed countries, uh, but uh, maybe 50% of plastic waste uh, gets generated in countries that are not developed are, or are developing. and would the investments be there in those countries as well is a question so it requires investment to scale up chemical recycling of plastic waste uh, not only in selected developed countries but also across the world uh, just to put it across uh, in a pictorial manner 
uh, this graph uh, uh, compares the mismanagement of plastic waste as well as the mismanagement of investments in uh, plastic waste management projects that get announced and get invested uh, so if we look at this uh, uh, the the center of plastic pollution is clearly uh, Africa and Asia uh, however uh, uh, investments 99 percent of investments in chemical recycling are happening in uh, Europe uh, North America and Australia so this also is a bottleneck I, uh, uh, we cannot ignore the elephant in the room that this is clearly a bottleneck for uh, a uh, for, for creating chemical recy chemical recycling that has immediate impact on the environment and uh, uh, addresses the mismanagement of plastic waste uh, uh, directly yeah. another bottleneck uh, is uh, cross value chain collaboration which uh, doesn't really exist right now uh, consumers don't worry about uh, plastic segregation there is no real segregation at source uh, with consumers uh, if you compare to something like what happens in Japan is is perfect but rest of the world that level of uh, 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 plastic segregation exists uh, at source at consumers at very few pockets um, plastic segregators uh, don't understand what do, what do pyrolysis plant need or they don't have necessary resources to supply feedstock to pyrolysis plants uh, most of the time uh, pyrolysis plants don't know how to purify the oil uh, when the purified oil has to go to petrochemical companies uh, petrochemical companies don't easily disclose the specifications of oil required by them because either they are trying to s figure out what specification of oil is required by them or that specification of oil is so confidential that if you disclose then you are also disclosing what catalyst you are using and where you are going to use that oil in the petrochemical complex also while dealing with petrochemical companies sometimes it is difficult to understand how would the polymer producer commit things on the behalf of the monomer producer and so on uh, also uh, uh, packaging companies uh, right now are using lot of PVC and PET based packaging which makes chemical recycling difficult FMCG companies also are sourcing packaging that is little more difficult to uh, uh, recycle chemically and so on so all this cross value chain collaboration uh, needs to develop and platforms like this offer an opportunity to to discuss uh, such a uh, cross value chain collaboration uh, and uh, uh, the last bottleneck that we would discuss is, is uh, more of a technical bottleneck uh, as we know that crude oil and gas is used by refinery and petrochemicals to produce plastics these plastics are used by consumers and mixed non recyclable plastic waste gets generated 90% uh, of which goes to landfill and incineration uh, even if you take plastic waste and convert plastic into oil the problem is that this oil has corrosives and catalyst poison so across the world pyrolysis oil is right now used as unclean fuel in burners and refineries and petrochemicals cannot use this contaminated uh, pyrolysis oil as a feedstock for production of circular plastics and sustainable chemicals so quality of pyrolysis oil is an important bottleneck that exists uh, and what we as a company are doing to work on these various bottlenecks uh, uh, to be specific uh, 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 purity of the oil uh, what we figured out is that our technology can take mixed plastic waste as well as contaminated plastic waste uh, contaminated pyrolysis oil generated from uh, mixed plastic waste and uh, we can remove the corrosives and catalyst poisons which uh, would hamper refineries and petrochemicals from using this uh, 
purified pyrolysis oil as a feedstock uh, our technology is able to remove 99.5 percent of chlorine impurities in certain cases we have removed even 99.9 percent of chlorine impurities we've reduced the chlorine content in contaminated pyrolysis oil from say 2900 ppm to less than 50 ppm uh, we've reduced uh, impurities we are patent granted patent uh, eliminates the impurities uh, of oxygen from pyrolysis oil in a highly energy efficient manner uh, we are able to remove bromine silica nitrogen metal heavy metal impurities uh, to, to to produce the oil that can be used by refinery and petrochemicals so so as to close the loop of pyrolysis based plastic circularity or chemical recycling or advanced recycling uh, certain advantages of pyrolysis oil purification technology developed by us uh, the our pyrolysis oil purification technology is highly scalable so you can use it with a small pyrolysis plant which may be producing say 3000 5000 10000 liters of pyrolysis oil and also the same oil purification technology can also be uh, operational at a central place where in a petrochemical complex is sourcing uh, kilotons of pyrolysis oil uh, and uh, we can purify those quantities of oil using this technology as well so it's highly scalable uh, it's highly energy efficient we can use waste heat as well for uh, purifying uh, conducting certain processes of oil purification it is highly energy efficient um, our core technology for pyrolysis oil uh, purification eliminates the use of chemicals for removal of chlorine oxygen and nitrogen from pyrolysis oil uh, uh, technology reduces both organic as well as inorganic chloride impurities in pyrolysis oil uh, we have a TRL 7 functional demonstration prototype in our R&D facility where a proof of concept quantities uh, demonstrate efficacy of our technology uh, we have patented uh, seven processes as part of this technology and couple of more patents are in drafting uh, as we speak uh, as a proof of concept you know samples of purified pyrolysis oil uh, produced from our technology have been approved by four global petrochemical companies for downstream production of circular plastics and uh, sustainable chemicals so uh, to solve plastic circularity bottlenecks we are also uh, building a project to initiate chemical recycling in India uh, as uh, next steps uh, we would be happy to explore collaborations happy to discuss uh, proof of concept uh, opportunities uh, please uh, do contact us and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, exploring discussions during this wonderful chemical recycling conference uh, by Smithers thank you so much uh, thanks for listening